Thank you very much, Mr. Savoy. Uh, clearly, this is what this issue is all about, putting a face to this human tragedy. Next, we'll hear from Navy Commander Paul Tolan. Uh, Commander Tolan came to see us well over a year ago, has been working with us very uh, closely, and um, uh, he's the one that initially brought this to our attention. He hasn't been able to see his daughter for more than six years. Paul was living with, with his wife and baby daughter, Erica, in 2003 in Navy family housing in Yokohama when his wife, suffering from depression, moved out and took Erica with her. Commander Tolan was denied custody or visitation even after his wife committed suicide in 2007. He is the only surviving parent and still he is denied access. And let me just point out, when Japan talks about reciprocal relationships and how important it is to maintain our alliance, the reality is that the United States government, through its military, has provided security for Japan since World War II for uh, roughly the last half century. And this gentleman was contributing to that provision of security for the government of Japan, yet has his, his daughter taken from him, and this same Japanese government will not allow access to him, even though he's the only surviving parent. Let's hear from Navy Commander Paul Tolan. Congressman Moran and Congressman Smith, who's not here right now, um, I want to thank both of you, and I thank you especially Congressman Moran for allow asking me to speak today. Now, my name is Paul Tolan, and I'm a commander in the U.S. Navy with 21 years of service to our country, and I am the only living parent of Erica Tolan, abducted over seven years ago. Erica was abducted by my now deceased wife, Betsuko, on July 13, 2003, while I was serving overseas in Japan. In late 2007, I received the tragic news that Etsuko had committed suicide. Although devastated by her death, I had renewed hope to be able to see Erica. Our own U.S. Supreme Court has found that the rights of a parent super supersede the rights of any non-parent, and I naively thought Japan would also respect the rights of a parent over a non-parent, but I was wrong. Erica is today held by her grandmother, Akiko Fatagi, in Japan, and I have absolutely no access to her. Our U.S. State Department has asked to visit Erica, but the abductor has said no. The Japanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs asked to see Erica, but again, they were told no. In the Japanese system, where there's no enforcement mechanism and compliance with family law is completely voluntary, all any government agency can say is, we're sorry, we tried. Nobody can offer any solutions because none exist. I flew back to Japan approximately one year ago to wait on a street corner and greet Erica on her way home from school and bring her birthday presents. This is the only possible contact with me. I am left with no other choices. Today, there are no solutions to this problem. The American parents you see before you are up against insurmountable odds. My own Japanese attorney apologized for the actions taken by the Japanese court and asked me in an email to, and I quote, please understand your case is not a piece of cake because of the racism and irrationalism of Japan. It might be something like defending the Taliban in the US. I think that statement truly defines the tremendous uphill battle we face. I never dreamed that serving my country overseas in one of our allied nations would result in the loss of my only child. I am left without any remaining options. Erica is essentially held captive in Japan, separating, separated from her only living parent in, in a country that has never returned a child. The prospects of seeing Erica again while she is a child remain grim. If you are listening out there today, Erica, I want you to know that I love you and I will never, ever give up on you until we are together again. My parents, Peter and Eileen Tolan, are 83 years old and in ill health. They hang on to life in the hope of being able to meet the granddaughter they have never met. They are both Irish immigrants who built a life and raised a family here in this land of opportunity. There is an old Irish proverb that states, hope is the position of each misery. While hope alone can never fully heal the parents you see before you, hope is the position that provides us with the daily medicine we need to remain standing with our heads held high 
and carry on to fight another day for our children. Today, Congressman Moran, Congressman Smith, and their colleagues in the House of Representatives have provided us with this hope. Hope that Japan can change its ways and join the family of nations that understand that children require love from both parents to grow up healthy in body and mind. Hope that President Obama and Secretary Clinton will address this problem forcefully and demonstrate to the world that they truly care about the security and well-being of abducted American children. Hope that someday soon we may again be able to share the love of our children. Hope that Erica Tolan may someday meet the grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins who are waiting for her with open arms. And hope that Erica and I are reunited once again so she may know and feel the love I so wish to give her. Thank you.